Hello drone racers, this video of setting up the Emax Baby Hawk is going to start at the end. I'm actually going to show you the end result of what I did before I show you how I got there because I know some of you are just going to want to see how it works and how it's set up and how it's installed and don't care about my painful process of getting it to work. I don't believe there's any cursing but it was kind of a pain in the butt to get there. But now that I've done, I'm pretty happy with the final result. So here's what we've done. This video is to get an XM Plus receiver installed inside the Baby Hawk. And I've seen some other videos and people have done it really weirdly. They've depinned it, they've wired onto the pins. But here what I have done, I have directly soldered the XM Plus to the pins on the board. In order to do that, I had to kind of fan them out they didn't line up properly so I kind of made a W or a trident shape out of it got it to fit over there they didn't fit all the way down but they fit over and I got them soldered on each of the three pins are soldered on and it works pretty well so that worked pretty well I might recommend an XM instead of an XM plus if you're doing this because it's not as long as it would fit better because the next problem I found is the way the antennas were installed, they hung out the back, and you'll see this in the video, and I had to figure out what to do with them and have them not get caught on the propellers. It was totally a pain. Very, very frustrating. If you're buying one of these, just buy the bind and fly, It's it, if that's available now. But what I ended up doing was taking these antenna pins off. I was glad these were the removable pins. I took them off, turned them around, and pressed them back down. So now what they do is they go through the front, down through the shell, and I ha I, you probably wouldn't have to, but I did take this cover off. This cover comes off really easy with one, two screws, and then it pops off with these little clips on the side. It fit over the camera. Did make it easy to slide this then through the bottom. I've got it slid just right through here, but it's going to hang with two of them underneath. I do like the XM because it has plus because it has the two antennas, and I'm can put a battery under here just smash them down they're not going to get stuck up in the antennas and I think it's going to work pretty well so I'm pretty happy with it. it's pretty clean I have the XM plus with the two antennas um, everything is connected really well so I think we're going to get there it did also take a lot of setup with the radio so I go through the process that I did of getting it bound getting it connected getting it powered properly um, getting the settings that I changed and what I had to do. You'll also see I did take the props off, but I only put two screws back on because that is more than enough for these. Four just seemed excessive. But that's where I am. That's the final result of how I got this connected. I think this is the cleanest way to install this thing by far. Um, it, you have to bend some pins, and your mileage may vary. Be very careful if you do it. I accept no responsibility if you break your board. But it worked out well for me. So now that I've done that, Next, I'm going to do the full flight review because I've made sure it works and it does work. And now we'll do a review. But if you want to see how I got through this process, hang out, sit back, enjoy. I apologize for any extreme frustration that I was venting at the time trying to figure out how to get the thing working. And we'll see you next time for the full review. Hello, drone racers. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Emax Baby Hawk. Uh, they've had the Nighthawk from Emax and a couple others, but this is the first Emax brushless micro drone. But it's a little different than a lot of them that have come out recently, where it's not quite ready to go out of the box. It takes a little more work. There is now a bind and fly available, but most people so far have only been able to get the plug and play. So that's what we've got here. So in this video, we're going to take the Baby Hawk, we're going to add a FreeSky XM Plus receiver. We're gonna set it up with the radio and get it all ready to go so then we can actually do a review. I looked up a couple of videos before this came on how to install the receiver and people were depinning these and attaching wires and soldering them to the circuit board and we're not gonna do any of that because I'm pretty sure what we're gonna be able to do here, I wanna keep this simple. I mean, this is Drone Racer 101. We don't wanna make this overly complicated. First, we're gonna get these wires out of the way. There's a set of wires in here. There we go, those are out of the way. Now, I'm pretty sure if we just slide this in, this XM receiver, I'm hoping these holes line up right with these pins and they fit right over. I think they will, but they might not be the right size. Not for sure, nope, they don't, they do not line up. I thought for sure 
those were just going to line right up there and be ready to go. That's really disappointing. So here's what I've done and here's what I'm going to do. Um, do this at your own risk if this is what you want to do. But I've just pulled those pins out just a little bit so there's a little bit of a uh, W shape to them and then they fit. Pretty sure if I solder these on, I'm gonna get a good connection. But it's gonna be a little interesting to solder, especially the first one, because it doesn't quite line up. Here's my tip, buy the bind and fly. This is just kinda cheesy to get it to work. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get it to work, but I'm not gonna be really happy about it. Again, I'm not thrilled with this. I'm not gonna say this is the best way to do it, but this is what I did and that's what we're gonna try. Um, it did fit on there. I've got a pretty good connection with this, for the solder on each of the pins. So I think it's gonna work just fine, but I don't like it. I mean, it, it works, but I don't like it. And then I don't know what exactly I'm gonna do with these antennas. They're huge and they just don't seem to have anywhere to go. Um, I suppose I'll tie them underneath here. Okay, so I've set up a new model for the Baby Hawk here. It's set up as Baby Hawk. We will uh, go in and I've just set up two switches, my arm switch on SA and my mode switch on SF. Um, and then I still need to go in and add those to the mixer. So those are set up. So now I'm pretty sure we can bind it. I think this is, I think with the XM, I haven't used many of these. If I remember right, I can use D16. So I'm gonna set bind and the XM does have a bind switch, a bind button. So I'm going to press it here. It's this little, it's so little. See if you can see it. It's this little bitty dot right there. That little, see that little black dot that's out of focus? There it is. That is the bind button. There we go. There I got it pressed down. Okay, try and get my hands out of the way of the props. I do have lights on the receiver. So let's unplug that, exit here. I'll plug it in. Okay, so the green light on the receiver indicates the it is receiving commands. So that's good. So we have a fail safe. Um, one of the things with this is, with this is a, a D16, I need to go in and set the failsafe, failsafe, no pulses. Okay, now we're going to have to go into beta flight and see, apparently this is not set up with the uh, standard configs. Off to beta flight. Okay, so I grabbed my USB cable, we're here in beta flight now so let's see what we've got first thing is modes yeah so that's that's interesting so yeah arm is not on anything so we're gonna have to fix this we have no battery connected so I'm gonna add a range for arm and I don't have anything connected there so I suppose I need to go first set up the receiver UART 3 is serial and one shot 125 that's pretty old I am set up for S bus and telemetry and system configuration 8000, 2000, which can probably get moved up. But for the moment, do we have anything on receiver? We have nothing on receiver. Channel map is wrong. Change that. Save that portion, but that's not going to fix our problem at the moment. So I know I've got power. I know I've got signal. My I do not have okay, so I have no RX. So apparently, there's the problem. This board is not powering the receiver through the USB, so we're gonna have to connect the battery. Okay, so I don't know exactly where we left off. My I ran out of video recording space, so I've had to uh, catch back up here, and I got a few more things done. In the meantime, I found the receiver wasn't lit because it's not powered via USB or yeah USB so we do have to connect we'll turn the radio back on welcome to open TX thank you Amber uh, plug the battery back in I've removed the props so we have ports on serial 2 now we have the receiver working I changed TAER so that's proper 
Um, under configuration, we're going to go ahead and enable everything there. Make sure the failsafe is set to drop. It is. PID tuning, we're not worried about at the moment. Are those default PIDs? Mm, I think so. Um, receiver, configuration. So in configuration, I notice we're on one shot, 125. I don't know what these will use, support, so I'm not gonna change that at the moment. We'll do a quick, that's interesting. Version, SP Racing F3 Evo on 3.0. So it's pretty old. We're not gonna update it yet because I wanna make sure it functions before I do any updates. So the other thing I did, so I need to do is ARM. I have this set on one. So I'm gonna move the arm switch down here this is, so it's consistent with everything else I do. Angle mode, I'm gonna move here to the beginning. Horizon, which my switch doesn't support at the moment, but is on aux two. Air mode, I'm gonna turn on on aux two just because that makes everything better. I think people are getting used to calling rate mode slash acro mode just air mode. They just expect it to be air mode, probably because it has a stick there. I swear I saved this last time when I failed to record it, but okay, so we're recording there now. Now, because it's analog, I've, everything I've had recently has been had D shot on it, but since this doesn't, we do have motors removed, propellers removed. I did check this, and you can't do this with the propellers on. They don't fit. They hit the USB cable. It's not even an option, so there we go. And I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and just arm it. Okay, so I don't like that. I want it off. I'm gonna change my configuration right now to do motor stop because safety first, right? We'll reconnect. Now we switch. There we have propellers. If we switch or armed, switch to air mode, we have propellers. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to put the props back on. And I'm only going to put two of the screws in. We'll take a look at that because I think that's all that's needed. And then we're going to see, see if it hovers. That's, that's as far as we need to go. We're going to make sure it hovers. And then we'll be able to do some full testing on it next time. Yay, it works. Success. It's, it's, I'll tell you, it's actually pretty satisfying. This shouldn't be that difficult, but it kind of was. Now that it's done, I think it looks pretty nice, though. I'm really curious to see how it's going to turn out in the full review. But that's coming up next time, because we've done enough for this one. If you found this useful, please leave a comment down below. I really appreciate it, just because I know I'm not wasting my time here. That uh, I'm, If I help somebody out, that makes it definitely well worth it. And leave a like while you're at it, too. It, it doesn't hurt, right? Right? Maybe some more people will see this and see more things on the channel, and we'll make more, more videos. But until next time, remember, just buy the bind and fly instead.